This is going to be Psalms 18. So we're going to look at Psalm 18 again. And once again, we're seeing verses about the second coming. Psalms 18.15 Then the channels of waters were seen, and the foundations of the world were discovered at thy rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of thy nostrils. So the channels of waters. This could be referring to the waters above the heavens. In Psalms 148 and verse 4, it says, Praise him, ye heavens of heavens, and ye waters that be above the heavens. That is plural heavens. Showing you there is water above the first two heavens. This is the sea of glass that you see in Revelation. And when Jesus Christ leaves heaven, he'll go straight through those channels of waters. And then according to verse 15 in Psalm 18, it says the foundations of the world were discovered at his rebuke. When Jesus touches down on the earth, there will be an earthquake to split it wide open. And you're going to see what's inside the earth. The foundations of the world were discovered at thy rebuke, O Lord, at the breath, blast of the breath of thy nostrils. So it, it says, at the blast of the breath of thy nostrils. That same breath that blew into man and made Adam a living soul is coming back to open up a can of 6,000 years of vengeance on the people on this earth. And that's why when, you know, you see a cartoon character or something, they... And they look scary on the cartoons. They have smoke coming out of the nostrils. Because Jesus Christ is coming back and boy is he mad. Psalms eighteen sixteen, He sent from above. He took me. He drew me out of many waters. That's what God did for you when you got saved. He drew you out of many waters by some fisher of men. That's what he's going to do at the rapture. When he comes to get you. That's what he's going to do for the Jews at the end of the tribulation. Uh, Psalms eighteen seventeen, He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them which hated me, for they were too strong for me. The world is bigger and stronger than me, but there is something in me infinite times stronger than the world. 1 John 4, 4, You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You'll soon find out that the world and your enemies are mostly too strong for you. But the Lord binds the strong man. Mark three twenty seven. No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his good, except he first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house. You see, the devil's the god of this world, but Jesus Christ is coming back and he's going to bind the strong man. He's going to be thrown into the lake of fire. First, he'll be thrown into the bottomless pit for a thousand years. He binds the strong man. Jesus Christ is much stronger than the devil in the world. Psalms eighteen eighteen. They prevented me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my stay. So the strong enemy is in the way, but the Lord is your stay. He keeps you from going under. Just when you think the devil has his foot on your back and won't let you up, the Lord is your stay. He'll keep you from drowning. Psalms eighteen nineteen. He brought me forth also into a large place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. So he brought me forth into a large place. So what's this large place? The promised land was said to be a large land in Exodus 3, 8. And heaven is a better country. According to Hebrews eleven six, this large place to which he is referring could be heaven itself. And you talk about a large place. And it's a safe place away from your enemies. And God delivers us. He brought me forth also into a large place. He delivered me. Psalm 31, 8. And hast not shut me up into the hand of the enemy, thou hast set my feet in a large room. It's a safe place, this large place. He said the Lord delivered him. The Lord delivers people throughout the Bible. He delivered you when you were born again. Colossians 1.13 says, Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, and hast, hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son. So he brought me forth also into a large place. He delivered me. Because he delighted in me. If you're a child of God, then the Lord delights in you. Many times I just I feel like God's always mad at me. 
And maybe he is kind of mad sometimes, or pre more than just a little mad, pretty mad sometimes because of me messing up. But when it comes right down to it, the Lord delights in me. He wants to talk to me. He wants to be with me. And he is, the Lord Jesus Christ is ready for the day when he's going to come get me in the clouds. The Lord delights in you. He's going to deliver you. He's going to bring you forth literally into a large place. You're already there spiritually speaking. But pretty soon you're going to be there geographically too. So he hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. That kingdom, that's a large place. We're in the body of Christ, made up of every believer. And spiritually speaking, Ephesians 2, 6 shows us that we're already sitting in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So in that sense, he's already got me up there in a large place. Psalms 18, 20. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness. According to the cleanness of my hands hath he recompensed me. If the Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness and the sense of my salvation, I would go to hell. Because Romans 3.10 says, There is none righteous, no, not one. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Uh, doctrinally, I'm never righteous enough on my own. Never righteous enough to get to heaven on my own. Practically speaking, a Christian can stay in fellowship by the cleanness of his hands. Psalm 1820, The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness. According to the cleanness of my hands hath he recompensed me. James 4, 8 says, Draw not a God, and he will draw not a you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. If you're a Christian, doctrinally, God sees you as perfect as Jesus Christ because he gave you the Lord's record. And put that on your record. But on your day-to-day -day walk, the cleaner you live, the closer you are to God. The cleaner your hands are, the better the fellowship. 1 John 1, 7 through 10. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. So admit you've sinned and confess and talk to God about the sins you commit each day and try to forsake the sin. Try to never do them again. This is how you stay in fellowship with God. It's not about salvation. You're already saved if you have believed the gospel. This is all about your fellowship and your discipleship. Psalm 18, 21, For I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not wickedly departed from my God. Can you look at yourself in the mirror and honestly say this? Can you talk to God and honestly say, I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not wickedly departed from my God? David said he hasn't wickedly departed from God. This shows he has the fear of God. Because in Proverbs 16, 6, it says, By mercy and truth, the naked iniquity is purged, and by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. So if David has not departed from God, then he's got the fear of God. Because if he's not departed from God, then he's departed from evil. Psalm 18.22, For all his judgments were before me, and I did not put away his statutes from me. David had the scriptures laid out open on his desk. That's the Lord's judgments and his statutes. David lived in the Word. And I bet he had a wide margin Bible and ran out of places to write and had to get another one and a Bible journal for extra space. And Nathan was probably giving him some verse-by-verse -verse commentaries and all that. I think David was a Bible man. Psalm eighteen twenty three, I was also upright before him, and I kept myself from mine iniquity. Are you upright? Are you going the right way? Your path will show that you're upright. Proverbs sixteen seventeen, the highway of the upright is to depart from evil. He that keepeth his way preserveth his soul. Are you departing from evil? 
or are you driving right into it? Does the Christ rejecting world hate you? If they do, you might be upright. Um, even if it's just something you've seen on, on the internet or something. Maybe you, you had somebody come on one of your videos who was a Christ rejecter and they cussed you out or something. Uh, that's if, if that's how you really are, what you portrayed in the video, and it was in the Lord's favor and you're getting cussed out for it, you might be upright because Proverbs 29.10 says, The bloodthirsty hate the upright, but the just seek his soul. Maybe you were preaching on the street and somebody come up to you and spit on you or cussed you. You must be upright because the bloodthirsty hate the upright, but the just seek his soul. How do you know if you're upright? Song of Solomon says, The upright love thee. So if you love the Lord, then there's a sign that you're upright. Ecclesiastes 12.10, The preacher sought to find out acceptable words, and that which was written was upright, even the words of truth. So the Lord's words are upright. Do you love the words? Are they in your heart? If so, you're probably living an upright life. Isaiah 26.7, The way of the just is uprightness. Thou most upright dost weigh the path of the just, so the Lord is the most upright. Psalm eighteen twenty three, I was also upright before him, and I kept myself from mine iniquity. When you see your temptations, run the other way as fast as you can. Keep yourself from it. Your iniquity is what separates you from God. Isaiah 59, 2, But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. Psalm eighteen twenty four. Therefore hath the Lord recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands in his eyesight. Practically, you're going to pay for the sins you commit in this life, here in this life in the flesh. If you're a born-again believer, that is, you're going to reap what you sow according to Galatians 6. If you smoke, you'll reap it in your body. You'll reap fornication in your body. God will recompense you according to your righteousness. Meaning he'll give you what you deserve. He will give you the equivalent of it. Even at the judgment seat of Christ, if you live right here with the right motive, then you will get something for your labor in the Lord. You're going to get what's coming to you eventually. He will recompense you according to the cleanness of your hands and his eyesight, it says. Everything you do is in the sight of God. Hebrews 4.13 says, Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Then Psalms 18.25, But with the merciful thou wilt show thyself merciful. With an upright man thou wilt show thyself upright. I personally like to show a lot of mercy to people. For one, I like for people to show a lot of mercy with me. I train a lot of people on my job, and I like to be patient, long-suffering, gentle, and kind to them. Show people mercy, and it will come back on you when you need it. If not with people, then it will with the Lord. The Lord sees you being merciful to others. If you're one of these people that has no mercy, doesn't put up with any... You got these people, they don't have any mercy. They won't put up with the slightest bit of annoyance or discomfort from another person they'll quickly tell them off or tell on them or something like that you're not a very merciful person i like to show a lot of mercy uh for example you got these people who they get behind you at the at the red light as soon as it turns green they blow the horn i mean as soon as it turns green show some mercy just in these little things of life uh, you got some somebody, somebody accidentally pulls out in front of them and they just lay on the horn forever. Show some mercy. How many times have you accidentally pulled out in front of somebody? Uh, you know, all these, in, in every aspect of life. Maybe you're at the uh, the store and someone runs into you with their buggy. Most likely they didn't mean to. Show some mercy. You You can show mercy to people all day long. It makes you have a better day. It makes them have a better day because you're not going to have all these stupid little confrontations because you're so unmerciful and unforgiving. 
and not understanding. And when these bad things happen to you, for some reason in your mind, it's like you've never done the same thing to somebody. There was a time when you pulled out in front of somebody. There was a time where you were at the red light and maybe your mind drifted off and it turned green and you just kept sitting there. For some reason, when it ha when somebody else does it, you act like you're the only, you that you're the only one that's not done it, and you give them a hard time for it. Remember that you've done most likely the same thing that you're getting mad at the people for doing. Or another example is at work, somebody might go over break their break by five minutes, and the person just the other person just jumps down their throat about it. When I know good and well. And seen it myself that they took 10 minutes longer than they were supposed to before. Yet they jumped down the throat of the other guy for maybe, maybe he lost track of time. Maybe he got caught up doing something else. But every day, if you don't take anything else from this study, at least take this from it. Be merciful. With the merciful, he's going to show himself merciful. With the upright man, he's going to show himself upright. But that's been just a quick little study on a few verses in Psalm 18.